Welcome to AUSA's Army Matters Podcast. This is Family Voices with Patty Barron. It is my pleasure to have as our guest today, Ms. Chelsea Ortiz from My Army Benefits. Welcome to the show. Chelsea, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Good morning, Patty. I'm the program manager for My Service Benefits. Well, that sounds really interesting, and I'm excited to learn more. Uh, before you get to questions, though, can you tell us a little bit about uh, My Army Benefits and why our audience should become familiar with this really awesome online tool? Oh, absolutely. My Army Benefits is a comprehensive benefits website for the Army. It includes a benefits library that has state and federal benefit fact sheets and resource locators, and also six benefits calculators that can be used to calculate various types of benefits regarding uh, soldiers' finances. It sounds like a great website. As a matter of fact, I'm really excited because I've actually been on the website, and it's wonderful. It's got a plethora of information and so many things that I learned as a retiree spouse, and I'm still able to get great information for my Army benefits. So can we go ahead and tackle maybe a few of the subjects that are on that website, and you could tell us a little bit more about how you handle that information? Sure. Let's start with the GI Bill. Here's a question. I am currently on active duty with 15 years in service. Can I transfer my GI Bill to my children? Yes, you can transfer your post 9-11 GI Bill to your eligible children. You can transfer all 36 months or the unused portion of your benefit. The transfer can be to your spouse, one or more of your children, or any combination of spouse and child. You have to make sure that you complete the transfer of education benefits application. Also, people need to be aware that changes to transfer eligibility will be effective on July 12, 2019. These are pretty critical changes. They limit the transfer of benefits to service members with at least six years of service, but no more than 16 years of active duty or selected reserve service. So if this applies to you, we recommend you process the transfer before 12 July 2019. Actually, we've been putting that information on our Facebook page at uh, www.facebook.com slash AUSA family because it's really important. I think there's a little bit of confusion that people can't do that. So if they want to be sure that they can transfer their GI Bill to their children prior to July 12th and not have to worry about that six years of eligibility, they really need to do it by the end of July 11th. No, you're right, Patty. And I would recommend if folks want to get more information, there's two options here. You can go to the Miami Benefits website and look under the federal benefits library for the GI Bill, or you can actually go to the VA's website that has more information about the GI Bill. Both of those will be able to provide you the information you need. Terrific. So the Yellow Ribbon Program, and um, sometimes this is a little bit confusing as well because other programs use Yellow Ribbon in their title, but this specific program is really important and it kind of correlates with, well, it doesn't kind of, it does correlate with the GI Bill. And so I'm going to ask the question of, am I am planning to return to college using my post 9-11 GI Bill? And I've been told that I will need to use the Yellow Ribbon Program because my tuition exceeds the VA threshold. I confirm the college is participating in the Yellow Ribbon Program. Am I guaranteed? to be in the program? Well, um, this is where it gets a little tricky, Patty, because no, you're not guaranteed. It depends on the college's agreement with the VA because sometimes they limit the number of students and it's determined on a first come first serve basis. So you want to make sure you get in there early. It's also recommended that you apply to the college and you'll be notified if you've been accepted into the Yellow Ribbon Program. Each year re-enrollment in the program will continue if the school continues in the program. You'll maintain your progress in your education. You maintain continuous enrollment and you still have entitlement to the post 11 GI Bill. You know, we were very fortunate that when my husband, prior to retirement, was able to transfer his benefits to our son, Joseph. Joe actually applied to seven colleges and got accepted to six of them. One of the things that we did was we checked out the Yellow Ribbon program of each college that he was accepted to, which helped inform uh, which one he was going to go to. Believe it or not, Cornell, which is where he ended up going to, had the best Yellow Ribbon program. It really was exceptional. And Joe was able to go to an Ivy League school and our cost was minimal. It was fantastic. And so I really highly encourage folks that are thinking about what the college might or might not do with the Yellow Ribbon Program to check it out on the college website, as well as I think the VA had lots of different information on there. Would the My Army Benefits have some information about that too? Yeah, you can go to the website, again, look under federal benefits, and you'll see the Yellow Ribbon Program listed there. You're going to have to actually dig deeper. It doesn't have each college listed. You're going to have to go to other resources like the college itself to Mm -hmm. figure out 
and I, and I believe the VA's website for Yellow Ribbon? Yes. I believe that we went to the VA website to check out a list of colleges and the their yellow ribbon. Listed there. Mm-hmm. Right, Patty. It's a great benefit. Our son also just finished up a year with the post-911 GI Bill, and we had researched yellow ribbon for him when we were going through the college mm-hmm. selection process. So wonderful benefit and really worth looking into to see if you can take advantage of it. Absolutely. And, and he didn't get in right away. He had to wait a year, but we put him on the wait list immediately. And halfway through the year, someone dropped out of school that was using the Yellow Ribbon program. And so they called and said, he's number one on the wait list. Would you like to go ahead and start? And we're like, absolutely. And so it, it is a great benefit. So don't give up, even if you if it's not eligible for you right away, get on that wait list and hopefully things will work out for you. Great. So um, we get this question a lot, both on Facebook and also uh, just people that email us. And it's about divorce, military divorce specifically, because so many things, affect you when you divorce your service member. So a question here is, how will my pending divorce affect medical benefits for my soon-to-be former spouse and our children? No, this this is a good question. First, uh, you need to know that your children will continue to be covered under TRICARE while you're on active duty and after your retirement, and your marital status doesn't change that eligibility. On the other hand, if we're talking about the military spouse, if you and your service member spouse are separated or living apart but not yet divorced, you keep TRICARE. After the divorce, you may be eligible for TRICARE coverage if you fit into one of the two following scenarios. The first one's called the 20-20-20 rule. You keep TRICARE healthcare benefits if you were married to the service member for at least 20 years, the service member served in the armed forces for at least 20 years, and the marriage and the period of service overlapped for at least 20 years. That's called the 2020 rule. The second circumstance is the 202015 rule. Here you keep all TRICARE health care benefits for one year. If you were married to the service member for at least 20 years, the service member served in the armed forces for at least 20 years, and the marriage and the period of service overlapped for at least 15 years. Unlike the 202020 rule, you only have full coverage for one year after the divorce. Chelsea, what can a former spouse do to find out information about other benefits that they might be eligible for? What I would recommend former spouses do is call the Miami Benefits Help Desk. The number is 1-888-721-2769. And if you call the help desk and ask whatever question you have about whatever benefits you might be checking on as a former spouse, they will be able to help you. If they can't answer the question, they'll find the answer for you and they'll do it rather quickly. So I recommend uh, former spouses write that number down. It's a very good resource. That's excellent. Um, we do get questions about that, and I'm, I'm glad to know that. And we'll make sure that we put out that information as well. When we talk about retirement and pay and taxes, one of the questions that comes up is, is my retirement pay subject to federal and state tax? Will my VA disability pay be taxed? Military retirement pay is considered taxable income for federal income taxes, but it varies when it comes to state taxes. What soldiers that are preparing to retire can do is look on the Miami Benefits website at the state benefit fact sheets, and there they can research state by state what tax benefits they are for soldiers retiring in that state. Also, it's good to note that military disability compensation and veterans benefits may be partially or fully excluded from taxable income. And you can find this information on the Miami Benefits website in the Benefits Library. The Benefits Library is a fantastic resource, and I know we'll probably talk about that a little bit later on in the interview. But going back to retirement and taxes, it's a little bit different, I think, for the National Guard and Reserve. And so I'm going to ask a question specifically for them. I am a drilling reservist and planning on transferring to the retired reserve in two years. I served 18 months on active duty orders in Iraq. I was told I can receive my retirement pay before age 60. Is this correct? Are there any negative impacts of drawing reserve retirement before age 60? Well, possibly. And and the answer depends on the dates of your service while on active duty orders in Iraq. Members of the reserve component who served on active duty in support of contingency operations after 28 January 2008 may be eligible to receive retirement pay before age 60. The calculation of the months you can retire early are calculated by aggregates of 90 days and a fiscal year. The eligibility age cannot be reduced below age 50. And it's, it's important to note that even though the pay eligibility date can be prior to age 60, no other benefits like TRICARE will begin until reaching age 60. Now you have the option to apply for a TRICARE Ready Reserve, which is a premium-based healthcare program, until you reach age 60 and qualify for full TRICARE. 
That's great information. Good to know. Here's one of my favorite topics, and that is um, military spouse education and career opportunities. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about a favorite subject of mine, which is spouse employment and careers. There is a wonderful website called the Military Spouse Education and Career Opportunities website. So the question is, my spouse and I are preparing for a PCS move, and I have utilized the SECO and Military Spouse Employment Partnership before our last PCS to find a job in my career field. My field advancement would be better if I continued my education. Are there any scholarships or grants for military spouses? There is a scholarship for you called the My Career Advancement Account Scholarship. It's also known as My CAA, and it provides up to $4,000 in tuition assistance. The My CAA Scholarship is for spouses of active duty service members in certain ranks who are pursuing licenses, certificates, certifications, or associate degrees. And those ranks are usually in the lower grade ranks for both enlisted and officer. I believe, Chelsea, is that correct? Yes, Patty, you're correct. So assessing my benefits, this was a really interesting fact that I learned from some of the folks that work for you, Chelsea, and it has to do with a DS log on. As a matter of fact, that what they were saying is that every military spouse should have a DS log on. Absolutely. And so I thought maybe we could talk about that a little bit. So I'll go ahead and ask the question. As an active duty soldier, I access various sites with my CAC card, but I have heard my spouse should create her own account by obtaining a DS logon account. Why does she need this? Also, when I retire, can I have my own DS logon account? No, that's a really good question. And it's actually very important for both retired soldiers and their spouses. So it's recommended that military spouses and veterans obtain their own DS logon so they can access a variety of official websites and stay abreast of vital information that's relative to their military service. A few examples of the sites that are currently available to use with the DS logon, there's over 45 of these sites, are the Department of Veteran Affairs eBenefits website, TRICARE, and the website you mentioned, the Spouse Education and Career Opportunities, or the the SACO website. The DS logon account is a secure self-service logon ID, which allows credentialed access to several sites using a single username and password. I would strongly recommend that soldiers and their spouses get the DS logon so that they can access these sites because you're missing out on a ton of information that can be used to help your family as you're serving on active duty and also preparing for retirement in the future. If you're a spouse of a retiree, can you still get a DS logon account? Yes, you can. I recommend folks go to the Miami Benefits website and on the front page, there's a link that'll direct you to a page that talks about the DS logon and how you can get one for yourself. So absolutely, they can get a DS logon because they're a family member of a retired soldier. You can access the Miami Benefits website at myarmybenefits.us.army.mil. One of the things that um, I also learned was the amazing resources that are on the My Army Benefits webpage, one of them being a resource library that actually has enormous amount of information there. Is there anything that you can tell us about the library? Yes, the resource library is broken down by state and also by countries where we have uh, military installations. And it contains phone numbers and websites and email addresses for the various organizations on an installation that would provide you support. It's a great resource if you're planning to move to a new state and you want to be able to reach out to one of those organizations. Or let's say you're traveling and you're in a state that you're not normally in and you want to be able to get some information about the nearest installation. Just go to the resource locator and you can find what you need there. It's also got information about the Reserve and the National Guard installations and units if you need to find those guys and track them down. Also, it's got information at the very bottom of each state's page about non-Army installations and can you link you to those. So I can't say enough about the resource locator. It's just a very comprehensive resource and everyone really should keep that as a favorite on their computers. Oh, I agree. I, it, I looked at it and it was amazing and I can't say enough about it. I think people should at least check it out. I, I, I would believe that almost Anything that you are thinking about or wondering about is going to be on there. And if not specific information, certainly a link to where you could find out more. So it's pretty amazing. Our folks really do. They 
go into a lot of effort to keep the website and things like the resource locator updated. All those fact sheets are updated at least once a year, and they're updated when we go through policy changes. And the resource locator is also updated every year. And what they do to update it is they literally call every phone number, and they confirm the email addresses, they confirm the websites, just to make sure everything is current. So you can rely on the information on Miami Benefits because it's vetted at least on an annual basis. I think that deserves a big hua. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're almost out of time. Chelsea, you have been an amazing guest. Any last thoughts, anything you want to share with our audience? Well, we haven't really talked about the calculator, so I'll make this quick. But the benefit calculators on the Miami Benefits website are really helpful. Uh, There's a retirement calculator, there's a survivor benefits calculator, a deployment calculator, And a lot of people don't like to think about this, but it's really important, even at a young age, when we think that we're immortal, that there's things happen, accidents happen. And it's always good to keep in mind, how can I make sure that my family is taken care of? The survivor benefits calculator on the Miami Benefits webpage can help you determine if something happened, what benefits your family would receive. It lists out the social security benefits, the VA benefits, the survivor benefit plan, and other benefits that your survivors would receive if something happened to you, like an accident when you were deployed. So it's really critical that soldiers take a look at that, particularly soldiers with family members, to help with their financial planning, survivorship planning. And also keep in mind, maybe you you determine that you need to get some life insurance over the long term to help your family if you're not there for them. So I highly recommend that people check out the Survivor Benefits Calculator on the Myra Benefits website. You have to use your CAC to access the calculator, so the soldier themselves have to go in and use it. But if you do it, you know, sitting side by side with your spouse and take a look at what would happen, then it's it's really a very beneficial calculator. And it provides relatively accurate information because the information is pulled from your personnel file to populate the date. So it's, it's all relative to you as an individual. It's not an estimate. It's pretty close to what would actually come through if something were to happen. So that's incredibly important information. We don't like to think about the worst case scenarios, but especially if you know that you're going to be deployed or you're going into a, a long training session, um, sitting down side by side and looking at that would be incredibly important. I believe that um, we had some of your staff here that was briefing us on the site. And one of the things that they highlighted was the um, SBP calculator, the survivor benefit calculator, and how incredible it was that it was, it pertained very much to you, specifically your family. When you get that type of news, that horrible news that something horrible has happened, you know, you don't think. You absolutely don't think. And I know that the folks that come in to help you and and, and guide you through that process also have access to that information because the Army has given them that access to support you. But it's hard to make those kinds of decisions at during that immediate time. Right. Um, and so um, having that discussion prior to at least gives you an opportunity to, to have something put away that you could pull out if you need to. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and soldiers that are preparing to retire really should check out the retirement calculator and the survivor benefit plan calculator to help inform that decision of whether or not to stay with survivor benefit plan over the long term and pay the premiums instead of just checking the block that you're not going to do it. Make an informed decision on that. And you can use the benefits calculator to do that. That's awesome. So friends, we've come to the end of our podcast episode. Chelsea, you were an amazing guest. Thank you. My Army Benefits, great, great resource. I don't think enough people know about it. And really everybody listening, if you're an Army person, uh, should check it out. To all of our listeners, thank you for joining us and keep it locked here for all Army Matters and for next week's episode featuring Army Thought Leaders. I am Patty Barron with Family Voices and as always, Family Strong, Army Strong.